When people look at drawings of buildings, they see images, they see drawings, which is what they are, but in reality, what they really are, are ideas. And ideas should be something that we can express in a narrative way, meaning you should be able to describe what's going on without saying what it looks like. You should be able to say, you know, this is what I was trying to do, this was my intent, um, you know, hopefully with a bunch of good reasons why that's your goal. You know, sometimes they're silly reasons, but you want to have some sort of a reason behind the narrative of what it is that you say that you're doing, because then the way that we judge or the way that we evaluate your architecture, and I always thought of this this way as a critic to sort of separate myself as an individual from someone else's work. And I try to do this with my own work, meaning look at my own work as objectively as I can, look at my client requests sort of as objectively as I can, so that it's not, it's coming through me, but it's not about me. It's about responding to things in an improvisational way where there's a, a ton of experience in the background, but that's all in the background of the conversation we're having about narrative. And I think that's why a lot of my clients, when I talk to them, they're surprised that the first few interactions are really, we're not drawing a lot, we're really talking about ingredients and intent, we're sorting and we are synthesizing, figuring out what the goals are so that we can stack decisions based on the narrative that we've outlined. So that as the thing goes along, because keep in mind, these are often many, many years of project, um, you can remember why you made decisions or what it is that you were using to make those decisions in that way, if the goals change significantly, which I've seen happen and is one of the number one red flags for how projects can torpedo themselves, is if you change your goals at the wrong time or for the wrong reasons, because the ripple effect through the whole process can be significant. And if you look at um, a video I made on managing projects, it's it'll talk about how many sort of people are involved in this hierarchy and why it can be such a problem and such a difficult thing to just manage that many people. So by being able to have a clear, compelling narrative for what it is we're trying to do with your building project, that helps us do a few things. It helps us stay on track because it helps us focus on things that are important. If you're someone who's drawing your logo before you even know anything else, you know, that might be fun and that's fine. But just be aware that that is extremely low on the priorities list. It's not what is important. Coming up with a strategy and coming up with goals and defining your intent, that's what's important because that is what allows us to organize everything else around it so that when you see an image, when you see a drawing, without even really knowing what it was going to look like, we can evaluate, is it doing the thing that we want it to do? Is it meeting our goals? Is it meeting our expectations? And 100%, we want to make sure that we like it, of course. But that's at the very end. And Buckminster Fuller has a quote that I really like, which is something to the effect of, you know, I don't think about beauty when I'm designing, but if it's not beautiful at the end, I know something's wrong. And I have found that to be the case as well, because focusing on aesthetics, we all have our own opinion. It's just a very unstable platform compared to building a argument in a very sort of legal way. I look at my, my thesis was called reasonable doubt for a reason. And it was about creating argument in architecture, which a lot of people have talked about, but I look at it this way because it creates a stable base so that you as the owner, you will see a shiny object. You will, you'll see something and go, Oh, maybe I should do that, or they did that, or, oh man, isn't that so cool? It's one of the most dangerous things. It's the most dangerous time. Every project has a freak out on the owner, no offense. It happens every project where, oh man, am I completely doing this wrong? Every real estate transaction I've been a part of personally, there's always the freak out moment of, is this just a horrible idea? How do we understand that? It's because of the decisions we made six months ago. It might be, absolutely the case that it has turned into a horrible idea. There's a lot of different reasons why that could be the case. The market has changed. You've changed as a person. Your situation has changed, whatever. There's plenty of reasons why it might in fact be a bad decision. There are plenty of reasons why you may uh, decide to significantly change your business model late in the game. But the risk doing that 
has to be planned for accordingly because it's never as simple as people think. The further in the process you are, the more difficult it's going to be, which is why I focus so much on being so fast and lean with clients at the beginning because changes are easy to make at the beginning when we're still figuring out the real estate, when we're still figuring out the finances, when we're still figuring out all of it, that's when we can make sure it's all singing and talking to each other, not this sort of piecemeal design, bid, build. In my experience, I hate working that way, which is guess what? That's why I don't work that way. So in, in order to be able to understand and prioritize, that's where this idea of narrative architecture comes in. And that's why if you can't describe very succinctly and very clearly what it is you're trying to do, then that should be a huge warning sign because the intent of a project has to be clear in the result because you're not going to be there to explain it. The architect's not going to be there to explain it. It has to be something that the user who you've never met is going to experience. And if you're trying to create a situation or an experience or like compel them, like nudge them uh, in a certain direction, that has to be experienced without you being there to say anything. So the more concise and clear we can get our narrative, the more we can judge is the design doing the thing we want or even the construction process. Like for instance, part of that narrative might be we need to open in six months. Part of that narrative might be we need to do this for an insanely cheap amount of money. Everything else needs to take that into account. If you're, if that's one part of your narrative and your goal, but then you're not designing to that and you're not budgeting to that and you're not scheduling to that, what do you think the chances of it working well together are? I would say you're going to be banging your head into the wall the entire time and you're probably still not going to get there. We need to understand the goals and the intent. And in my mind, that's with words. It has to be something that we can describe. Describe clearly, describe well, describe in a compelling way. Why do we want to do boring stuff? I'm not working on boring projects. And so it has to be described in a compelling way for a compelling future, a compelling vision of the future for your project, for you as the business owner. That's where we're trying to go. And that's why I look at it that way. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.